maps. Um, thank you, Dr. Asipov, for joining us this morning, and I will give you the floor for your presentation. All right. Uh, thank you, Melissa, for introducing me, and uh, good morning, good evening, uh, everyone, depending on uh, what time zone you are currently. It's my pleasure to be uh, here with you and give this tech talk today. Um, yes, uh, for those of you who doesn't know where uh, Lulio, uh, a city of Lulio is located, so um, I just want to, to say that it is pretty much close to, uh, to the Arctic Circle. It's now 150 kilometers away uh, from the Arctic Circle. And um, uh, we are the northernmost uh, technical university uh, in Scandinavia. Um, maybe um, um, one curious thing would help you to remember this place is that uh, our motto tells that great ideas grow better below zero. Well, maybe it's uh, questionable, but nevertheless, it's, I find it rather amusing. Let's see. Let's see about our ideas. Uh, so what uh, I'm going to talk uh, about today. Uh, in fact, I, I will, uh, the idea is to introduce uh, the uh, recently started INRC project um, uh, uh, with the title Unsupervised Learning in um, Natural Language Processing Tasks Using Vector Symbolic Representations on Phaser-Based Associative Memory. So quite many concepts are um, uh, mixed together in this title. So uh, my idea is to uh, sort this uh, soup out and uh, get it clear what we are working with. Um, also, um, during the talk, I will present novel results. So we, we, uh, we have just started recently uh, in the beginning of October. Uh, but uh, today, what you will hear uh, are preliminary results towards achieving the um, uh, major objective uh, of the project. But uh, from, um, from the beginning, I want you to tune to the wavelength of the classical machine machine learning tasks. So I, I know that your neuromorphic community, but uh, uh, so you you deal with spiking neural networks um, uh, and such. Uh, but uh, for this talk, please tune to uh, to the topic of classical machine learning. And specifically, we will be talking about uh, classical um, um, neural network architecture, which is self-organizing maps. Um, so the, the algorithm uh, which was invented by Co uh, Kohonen and uh, um, uh, actually uh, uh, found wide usage in many applications, right? And uh, so, and here I show the, I mean, what, what I mean with the classical machine learning task. So we, we have input data, so somehow we have, uh, uh, which is described through feature vectors, uh, which are then fed into uh, uh, a solver uh, engine, so uh, which is, um, uh, which can be any uh, kind of uh, artificial neural network, for example. Um, a little bit about the team, uh, so, um, which, uh, which I also uh, find very um, curious. Um, um, so we are two universities with the same acronym, so LTU. So uh, uh, me, uh, I am a, a PI in this project, and uh, uh, my expertise in hyperdimensional computing. I will tell about uh, what hyperdimensional computing is very shortly. Uh, but my uh, partners in this project are La Trobe University from Melbourne. Uh, so both are uh, acronymized as LTU. So uh, for short, we call um, uh, LTU Lulia for LTU North and uh, LTU in Melbourne for LTU South, but um, doesn't matter. Um, so the senior team uh, of our project um, uh, includes, uh, besides me, uh, Professor Daminda Lahaku. Uh, who is the director of Center for uh, Cognition and Data Analytics. And uh, he is also the inventor of a growing SOM. So uh, you can find uh, transactions on neural network and learning system. Uh, article from 2001 describing um, self-organizing maps uh, uh, um, uh, without a fixed topology. Um, and then we also have an associate professor, uh, Dustin De Silva, uh, uh, from the same department at LTU South, and um, uh, he's um, uh, he's famous for uh, 
um, um, introducing uh, an algorithm which is called iCastle. So it, it's a uh, it's a kind of iterative uh, iterative uh, self-organizing map based algorithm which allows for generalization of um, uh, of data and uh, continuous analytics, so to say. And we have two um, uh, two students um, uh, working with us uh, on this project. Um, the goal of this project. So um, let me show this slide before I. Uh, I will talk about the details, but as, as the talk continues, you will understand uh, all these uh, mappings. But uh, I just want to make a statement that uh, the overall goal, the main goal uh, of the project is to investigate a suitability of a framework, which is called vector symbolic architectures. I will introduce what, uh, what this is on the next slide. Um, as a programming abstraction for neuromorphic hardware. So uh, what I mean with, uh, with this is that the algorithm can be um, uh, implemented using a very intuitive kind of programming approach, which uh, so uh, an example uh, you can see here is this equation um, uh, above, which apparently uh, is, the, um, is the update mechanism for, uh, for a self-organizing map, as I will tell later on. Uh, and uh, uh, but then, so, um, uh, so when expressing a certain algorithm in terms of vector symbolic architectures, so um, uh, it, it would be possible to to map it to specific um, uh, to specific components, hardware components of neuromorphic hardware. Um, and um, yeah, uh, in this case, uh, the, the idea is that the programming will become uh, somewhat easier and more. Um, available to to, to uh, programmers who do not want to deal with the details of uh, uh, spikes and uh, neurons. Um, right, uh, and we will show a case uh, uh, this goal um, um, uh, on the example of self-organized maps, as I, as I have already mentioned. Um, so uh, the starting point for this project uh, is an implementation of uh, of an associate memory, which is called threshold phaser associative memory. Uh, so, uh, so here you see uh, the title uh, of the article. So uh, I will not go into details uh, of the implementation of TPAM, but in short, um, so th this mechanism allows to uh, store uh, patterns like M patterns of high dimensionality. So like uh, several hundred um, neural positions, so to say. Um, and then, um, so, uh, so, so this, um, uh, as the talk continues, I will also refer to these uh, patterns as high dimensional vectors or hyper vectors for, for short. So uh, in the case of TPAM, so these hyper vectors are uh, sparse complex patterns. And uh, the article suggests, uh, or uh, so the, the mechanisms allow us to map uh, the complex domain to the temporal domain. And uh, uh, basically, uh, so uh, there is a realization uh, on spiking hardware uh, of this mechanism. But again, so th uh, th this is the starting point. Uh, and uh, as the talk continues, I hope you will, uh, it will become clear um, why uh, this specific uh, implementation of this mechanism is important uh, in the context of uh, our project. But first thing first, um, vector symbolic architectures. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with, uh, with this um, uh, research area, um, or it's uh, rather a computational framework. But um, um, so we have a community approximately um, maybe 100 people uh, worldwide uh, actively uh, developing uh, uh, th uh, this novel uh, in conventional computational framework. So th uh, this is a framework for uh, distributed information processing, as you will see um, uh, on, on several examples later on. Uh, so in this framework, the, um, so just few fundamentals so that we all st uh, um, stay on the same page. Uh, so, we have elementary symbols, which are uh, random vectors drawn from uh, high dimensional space. 
Uh, and then we have a set of uh, algebraic operations for uh, man manipulating these vectors. And then uh, uh, the specifics of vector symbolic architectures that uh, the vectors are interpreted as a whole through a well-defined similarity metric. So, for example, if our space is bipolar, so that uh, on each position of a vector, uh, we, we have either minus one or one, well, we, um, uh, I mean, it, it, it's an analog of, uh, of a binary uh, representation, and we have n positions like this, and n normally is large, maybe 1,000 elements. Um, then, uh, so um, in a given task, we have some uh, set of initial symbols, A, B, C, for, for which we generate random uh, high dimensional vectors. And then, uh, so we have three operations, uh, uh, a set operation, which is element-wise element summation, uh, a binding operation, which is element-wise multiplication, and uh, ordering operation, which is a permutation or a cyclic shift. And as I said, so, um, so everything in vector symbolic architectures framework is interpreted through uh, a well-defined uh, similarity metric, which in this case, or in many, uh, uh, in the majority of cases, uh, we, we use uh, um, uh, cosine similarity or a dot product uh, to, um, to, to evaluate the results. Um, yeah, and th there are some um, particular properties of uh, high dimensional representation and high, high dimensional algebra, which is illustrated also uh, on this uh, histogram over here. So the higher is the dimensionality, the most, um, uh, more likely is to randomly generate uh, or, uh, an orthogonal vector. So uh, a vector for which uh, cosine similarity would be very low. Uh, and then, uh, so just again, very briefly, we don't have time to go into details of this, um, uh, of the fundamentals, but uh, basically summation, the set operation results, uh, so the, the result of the set operation uh, uh, is yet another vector uh, which preserves the similarity of the uh, original components. Uh, the binding operation, which is element-wise multiplication, uh, uh, produces uh, as a result a random vector compared to uh, to the uh, vectors uh, vector components, and the same goes for for the permutation as well. Um, so now, how can we use this um, um, uh, framework to, uh, um, for useful um, uh, to, to implement useful functionality? Uh, before doing that, I, I must say that uh, well, here on this slide, I, I exemplified random vectors drawn from plus minus one, so from a bipolar high-dimensional space. Um, same properties and and, uh, um, and same operations are defined for uh, different numerical systems. So uh, in each position, you might have, for example, real numbers or complex num uh, numbers. And essentially, this complex domain representations uh, was um, utilized to, to implement this uh, TPAM associative, uh, associative memory on spikes. But again, so this is not the focus of this particular presentation. So what is important is that we have random vectors and a set of operations for manipulating these random vectors. So what can we do with these random vectors? Um, so the, uh, probably the uh, best feeling you can get um, uh, from, uh, uh, from an example of representing different data structures. Uh, so uh, this um, uh, framework is very expressive in, uh, in uh, representing different data structures in a distributed way. So what do I mean here? So for example, if you have a sequence, uh, if you want to represent a sequence of uh, uh, symbols A, B, and C. So what you do, you generate random vectors for A, B, and C, and to, um, uh, to encode the position, so you use permutation. So th uh, th uh, that's what is shown with the, with the first equation. And then you add them together to form a set. So uh, in this case, S is a, a hyper vector. So the, uh, the result of these three operations, um, uh, it's a hyper vector of the same dimensionality, which uh, describes an ordered set, sorry, a sequence. 
So in a similar fashion, you can uh, represent other data structures, like graphs of different kinds, cyclic, a cyclic, so like a tree, uh, uh, for, uh, for example. <coughs> Uh, I will not. Um, uh, I will not go into. Um, I, I will not spell out uh, the details of graph representation. But the, but the idea is pretty much similar. So uh, this uh, this data representation technique using hyperdimensional vectors was um, used widely. I would say over the past five years to. Um, uh, to encode data uh, which is compatible with classical or traditional implementation of machine learning uh, algorithms. So what, what do I mean? So we, we have an input data and then you can uh, encode it uh, using a hyperdimensional representation so, uh, so, uh, in, uh, of this kind depending on what you, uh, what you need. Uh, and then you um, you can input uh, you can use these representations uh, as an input to, for example, um, uh, to um, to a multilayer per uh, perceptron or to uh, a self-organizing map. So if you want to know the details, uh, so here you see at the bottom of the slide the reference to the article. But um, what we did here, we um, we used uh, hyperdimensional representations to to encode n grams of a text, and then we uh, uh, input this um, uh, n grams uh, to self-organizing maps. So what uh, what is nice with this approach is that you keep the input uh, of the uh, with the fixed dimensionality, which is a very nice property. So fixed dimensionality. Uh, encoding uh, input allows um, uh, to speed up the training process of traditional uh, uh, ML algorithms. Yet another example from last year. Um, so we applied this um, um, distributed data representation or BSA data representation to encode sequences of uh, variable length uh, in the context of intelligent transportation systems. So we had a really big, a big data scenario. So together with um, uh, my colleagues uh, from Melbourne, uh, where we wanted to analyze uh, the, the traffic patterns in the uh, in the greater uh, Melbourne region. So we had, uh, for example, passages. We, we have reco um, recorded passages of cars through. Uh, several crossings, so these crossings were, uh, so the, the, the traces were of variable length, and encoding this, uh, um, uh, these sequences using uh, vector symbolic architectures allowed us uh, to, to uh, speed up the training process and uh, of traditional uh, algorithm. But again, so this is just an example that um, uh, so far DSAs are uh, very used uh, to encode data, to represent data. Uh, what is a novel theme, and that's what I will spend most of the time uh, today, uh, is that uh, BSA can be used all the way. Uh, all the way, in, uh, meaning that you can even implement the algorithms themselves uh, in, um, uh, in terms of vector symbolic uh, architectures, uh, using these uh, operations as I introduced previously. So uh, and uh, the uh, specifics of this uh, of this implementation is that computations will be done in superposition. You will uh, you will uh, understand what I mean um, uh, with this um, uh, pretty soon when I uh, when I will trace the uh, functionality of um, uh, trace the implementation of the uh, self organizing maps. But uh, this is the uh, is the focus of uh, of our project. So to uh, implement uh, or to express uh, a specific uh, machine learning algorithm, a high level description uh, using vector symbolic architectures, and map it uh, to um, uh, uh, to the functionality of uh, neuromorphic hardware, which is Loihi, uh, obviously in this case. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, I, I don't need to go into details of uh, self-organizing maps uh, for, uh, for this community. 
Uh, but still, I think it's very important to, to recapitulate the, the major aspects um, so that um, uh, you would appreciate the, uh, uh, the solution uh, using vector symbolic architectures. So self-organizing maps, so in, in, in the traditional formulation, so it's a, uh, it's a variant of artificial neural networks uh, for unsupervised uh, or competitive learning. And uh, so self-organizing uh, organizing maps, they uh, use, they, they have a neighborhood function. And this neighborhood function uh, uh, is intended to preserve the topological properties of the, uh, of the input space. So uh, it has also some biological explanation to, to, to it, but uh, so, uh, I guess you all remember that self-organizing, in self-organizing maps, you, you, um, uh, you project a high dimensional input uh, to, um, to 2D uh, plane, and then you, you, um, uh, you will see areas or neighborhoods where uh, different classes um, uh, uh, end up. And uh, the self-organizing maps are um, very popular for exploratory uh, analytics, so you can find them um, uh, everywhere. So now, uh, let me maybe slow down a little bit uh, the tempo so, um, uh, as I go into the technical description and um, start with the following statement, so to say. I, am, uh, I will not go into details of the state-of-the-art implementation, but uh, I guess you will all uh, capture uh, what, what, I, what I want to say. So uh, here on the left, uh, uh, we see uh, the a graphical representation of self-organized map functionality. So, uh, as per the, the description of the algorithm, so and the algorithm tells that we have uh, some uh, neurons arranged in a certain uh, topology, uh, and then we have an input vector. Um, so, uh, uh, in an input feature vector of certain dimensionality, and then uh, so, uh, basically each uh, position of the input vector is uh, connected to all the neurons of the self-organized maps. Uh, and then, uh, so we, uh, basically we have a weight matrix uh, describing these uh, connections over here. And uh, just again to uh, to uh, recall, uh, the learning the, the, the learning principle here is winner take all. So you input a, um, uh, you input uh, an input vector, and then you try to find a so-called best matching unit. So the the, the uh, neuron uh, which is closest uh, according to a certain distance to uh, the current. Um, uh, to, to the current weight vector, so, uh, so um, <coughs> to the current weight vector of this neuron. And then there is an update mechanism which involves, which defines also um, uh, uh, a neighborhood around this be best matching unit to where the new weights are propagated. So I guess um, uh, you all are familiar with this kind of description. And apparently, uh, most of the spiking uh, implementation, or at least those that I that I have uh, reviewed so far, uh, they translate uh, this specification uh, pretty much literally. Uh, what do I mean uh, in here? So here is one of the uh, instances of the existing implementation. So meaning that, so we have. Uh, uh, so, uh, so basically, the input vector is uh, each position is treated as a neuron, uh, so which uh, um, uh, spikes when it's uh, activated, and then we have competitive units on that. Uh, uh, so we have two groups of units: so the input units and the and the competitive uh, units. And then we have this connection from the com uh, from the input units to the competitive units uh, with different weights, and then the fire depending on the uh, on the input uh, pattern. So uh, that's what I say is a literal translation uh, of the specification of the algorithm on the left side to uh, the implementation uh, um, uh, to the implementation uh, in this uh, in specifically this um, um, uh, using spiking uh, neurons. 
So, and here the uh, the weight update uh, um, means on well the high level of uh, uh, abstraction is adjusting the the uh, the times of. Uh, um, firing uh, of neurons so that um, a specific group uh, of neurons would fire first on a specific input. And, and that is uh, also because, um, uh, so, so this time, uh, time domain optimization is because uh, in neural architectures, as uh, you may guess, so uh, there is no information about uh, the neighborhood. So the neighborhood is uh, the notion of neighborhood is not very, very well defined. So so to say, so the one neuron uh, doesn't know um, uh, much about the neurons in uh, in uh, uh, proximity, so to say. So now, in what uh, will follow, I want to ask you a question. So what if we we would translate this specification uh, of the SOM algorithm? differently so we we we, we would interpret uh, we, we would just uh, have same functionality but we, we would in, interpret it different uh, differently and see what what are the consequences and the difference the major difference uh, uh, that i want to enable in you so when thinking about it is that so when thinking about uh, these nodes over here uh, we will not be thinking about neurons so these nodes are not neurons. What are those? Uh, what are what are they uh, then? So uh, let us kind of look at the specification of the algorithm from a different perspective. So from a symbolic perspective now. So uh, as I said, so uh, the nodes um, on the, uh, in the topology, uh, they are not neurons with incoming weights, but uh, they are. Uh, Hyper vectors, so high dimensional vectors of weight patterns. So all the weights coming into, for example, a node with a, uh, with the specific ID uh, form a vector of um, uh, uh, so form a pattern of weights, so to say. And then uh, the patterns, so the, the weight patterns, they are, they are arranged in a logical topology. So uh, later on, you will see this um, uh, variable uh, topo. Uh, so uh, wh wh what is the uh, difference? Well, actually, uh, there is no much difference uh, when uh, adopting this way of thinking about the algorithm. Apparently, if you would look at the implementation uh, of, uh, of a self-organized map uh, in MATLAB, in, well, whatever in the implementation, that is essentially how programmers usually um, interpret the specification and implement SOM. So they have a list of weight vectors, and then uh, on the side they have a topology information. And then they have these four loops. So going through the vectors and then, the, uh, uh, and then identifying the, uh, uh, the node which, uh, which was hit, finding the, the neighborhood, etc., etc. So, um, uh, I guess um, uh, th uh, this one is uh, uh, is clear. And now, so let's take it very slowly. So uh, I said that the uh, the patterns will be arranged in a logical topology. What do I mean uh, here? Um, so now we will assign a random vector hypervector to um, to each node. Well, now uh, you see the symbolic notation here, but uh, uh, think about the symbolic notations as randomly, uh, randomly uh, generated hypervectors of certain dim dimension uh, dimensionality, say 1,000, or I actually will present the results with a, a dimensionality of 10,000. Uh, but doesn't matter. So you, you generate them uh, all uh, in advance, uh, and then uh, you need to define a neighborhood. Uh, you need to define a neighborhood, and the neighborhood will be a set, an unordered set, of IDs which are um, uh, uh, of the closest nodes on this logical topology. So, for example, the neighborhood of node one, so the, the uh, one degree neighborhood, would be uh, a sum of two hypervectors um, um, for ID eight and ID two, right? And uh, in general, so uh, so any neighborhood will be just a sum of all nodes. 
uh, uh, around uh, a chosen one. And then, um, so what you can do with VSA, and this is very interesting, so you, you, you can uh, associate a neighborhood, which is essentially, so this neighborhood uh, thing is a, is, a, is a single hypervector. So you can associate this neighborhood with a specific node, and this is normally done by binding. So remember that uh, so it's, um, uh, binding is element-wise multiplication. And then uh, what you can do, you can do a sum of the, uh, of the uh, bound pairs, and uh, in this way you would describe the entire topology. So an entire topology, and now you, you probably uh, see uh, why I, I, I introduced the notation for, for the topology. So this topo here is a single hypervector, which describes collectively the entire logical topology. Okay? So what, what can we do next? Well, we need to assign weights to the nodes. And we do it also in a, in a very symbolic way. So we take the IDs so the, that we generated previously, uh, and we assign the weight vectors. Well, uh, first uh, it's randomly generated weight vectors, and then they will be updated as new input uh, data uh, is coming. And this is again done by binding. And then, so if you take the sum of all these pairs, so bound weight to the node ID, uh, in this way, you will describe the entire map in a single hypervector again. And I always stress this, that this is a single hypervector. Why? And now, well, uh, even if you didn't read the, the article uh, about TPAM, but this is essentially uh, what is stored uh, in the in the TPAM. So one, uh, one hypervector, if uh, represented using um, uh, complex uh, in complex numerical system, uh, it's an activation. Uh, well, it's it's a, uh, it specifies the firing time of n uh, neurons. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Melissa. <clears throat> so. Um, so, and essentially, so at this moment, so uh, uh, I hope you, uh, you, you have this feeling that uh, a single uh, neural group uh, with specific pattern of firing neurons would specify collectively an entire map of weights bound to uh, logical topology. All right, what can we do with that? Next. Uh, well, the, this slide just contains uh, all the information I have said uh, uh, in one slide. So I, I, I hope over it. Uh, next, we need to enable learning. So, uh, and the, the major uh, the major operation uh, of the specification is finding the best matching unit. So, how, how in this kind of interpretation we can find best matching unit? Well, finding best matching unit is as simple as Taking the uh, input vector, so which is also uh, of the same dimensionality as our um, uh, map, and unbinding it from the map. So, um, uh, what what do I mean? Uh, what, what do I mean by here? So, um, I, I think I have to uh, spell it out a little bit. So, if M uh, over here, uh, so it's uh, it's uh, so we, we take just two nodes uh, as an example. Uh, so uh, uh, ID of the first node uh, bound with the weight uh, vector of the first node plus ID of the second node uh, bound with the weight of the second node, right? So when, when you do this operation, so multiplying by uh, um, X, and X is, a, uh, is an input, um, as an input uh, vector. <clears throat> so this X essentially uh, would be applied to both elements of the sum, and <clears throat> and whatever weight is closer, according to well, uh, according to the cosine uh, uh, co cosine uh, measure, uh, it will be par uh, partially cancelled, uh, cancelled out because the binding is a reverse operation. So. Um, and as a result, you, you will get the um, a noisy version 
of the node's ID to which this weight is bound. So initially, uh, I mean, obviously, so when you initialize the network, so the first uh, first operation of this kind uh, of this kind will hit <coughs> uh, uh, a random node. But then when uh, when when you update uh, this vector m, uh, so you 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 will uh, uh, see that. Uh, and the um, uh, input vectors of the same class hit consistently uh, the correct node, right? So what you can do next? So you can take this uh, ID that you uh, that you extracted from uh, M, and apply to your topology uh, vector. So uh, to one to a single vector that de describes collectively the entire topology, and uh, the result of this operation, similar similarly to this one, will. Um, uh, will reveal the IDs, so the, this sum of IDs uh, included in the neighborhood for this node, because um, uh, so the, the uh, ID will be uh, cancelled out uh, uh, during the unbinding. Uh, next, uh, the update. So we need to update the weight. Uh, I will not uh, go into kind of very detailed description of why uh, uh, why it is happening, but I just want to, to uh, those of you who are interested, I um, uh, I refer you to these three articles. So this is our article, the first one from uh, 2019, uh, which is uh, uh, which can be linked to previous implementation of a binary SOM. So uh, a, a SOM implementation which is designed to handle binary inputs and uh, to be implemented on uh, FPGAs, on a digital hardware. Uh, and, and there, the weight update is essentially replacing some of the weights. So uh, uh, replacing some of the uh, weights uh, from the uh, uh, existing weights, uh, weight vector, with the, values, uh, with the values from the input vector, with certain probability. So you basically take the weight of this vector and uh, uh, update selected uh, selectively the positions with the values of the um, uh, of the input vector. And how do uh, how do you do the update? Here we come to the very interesting point of computing in superposition. So you update uh, the entire neighborhood in only two um, uh, vector operations. So remember, so this is your neighborhood that you have extracted. Uh, this is the um, basically uh, few positions of the input vector, so that's what you have. So you do the binding, and essentially, so the, the, this um, uh, values of the weight vectors uh, it will be um, bound with the all uh, all the IDs uh, included in the sum uh, of the neighborhood vector. And uh, essentially, so uh, you you simply add this result to the vector m. So it's important, and then uh, basically you, you get uh, the, the, the new version of the updated sum. And it's, it's important to, to appreciate here is that you do not enumerate the nodes. So you always operate on, the, on, uh, on vectors describing collectively the sum and collectively the neighborhood. OK, so this is important and interesting. So uh, I think. I, I have a couple of more minutes to go, so um, I, I want to, 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 to give you some feeling of uh, what does it mean or where we are going to. So this is a very preliminary uh, um, uh, map or mapping of what I have presented to, to what might appear as an implementation on, <coughs> on, uh, on, on Lahihim. So essentially we are talking about so the entire self-organizing map uh, uh, would be uh, a neural group, uh, uh, well, with specific firings, basically. So then we have, uh, uh, so we would have an external input um, uh, projected to the uh, input neural group. So th uh, this is our X. Um, so um, we will have yet another group which would take the uh, the uh, firings uh, from the SOM uh, group and uh, implement essentially the uh, the unbinding operation, and the resulting firing pattern then uh, can be uh, cleaned up using the uh, well. Actually, uh, uh, this thing over here is pretty much TPAM in uh, in the shape uh, in the current shape. 
And the same, uh, so as you uh, identify the uh, heated node, so you, you would extract uh, the uh, neighborhood from the topology in a similar way. And uh, again, so uh, you, you, you would need to perform binding and update the um, uh, self-organizing map. At, le uh, at least that's uh, this, this kind of um, <coughs> architecture we have in mind at this moment. But again, so uh, let me finish my presentation with a few slides showing the proof of concept. So I, I will show you the test results, uh, which are um, uh, um, from, from simulations on synthetic data. So we had 10 classes. Uh, so, we, um, so we initialized with, well, 10 randomly generated uh, vectors uh, of dimensionality 10,000 um, positions. And uh, so in uh, each class, then, uh, um, so it's 25% uh, cent added noise to, to each of the, uh, <clears throat> uh, to, to, to each of the uh, initial vectors. And then we have uh, 100 instances for, uh, for training and, um, uh, and um, 1,000 uh, vectors for testing, uh, basically. So uh, the SOM topology was 70 nodes. And uh, here on the next few slides, I will show you the, uh, how if you start to update a single class on an empty SOM, so what, what, what does it mean? So this graph shows the heat when the SOM is, uh, is just initialized. So you, you input the uh, one single, uh, well, you just test um, the, uh, the heat of the test data, and then you see so the pretty much random heats um, here. <clears throat> After a few iterations, so you, uh, and the update uh, according to the procedure I described before. So you see that certain clusters start to uh, emerge, so that they start to to uh, to, to attract uh, uh, um, uh, the entries the, um, of this particular class uh, in a certain neighborhood. And uh, basically, skipping few, a few slides. So in ten iterations, so most of the data are concentrated in the neighborhood. Uh, of uh, four nodes, as exactly as we uh, as we um, uh, uh, projected, and uh, so finally, so the, uh, this is the final graph I want to show. So it shows the result of the um, um, of the complete training process uh, of a um, uh, of a uh, song uh, with seventy nodes, ten classes, twenty uh, iterations. Uh, and uh, so uh, the different um, uh, with the proper learning rate adjustments and neighborhood adjustments on each iteration. So you see that uh, at the end, so all classes um, they um, found their bin in the uh, uh, on the uh, seventeen nodes neighborhood. So the the, the accuracy on the test data uh, was very close to the hundred uh, percent in this case. So finally, I, I want to to, uh, to conclude with the kind of to-do list. So first of all, I, I presented uh, a novel approach to, uh, to to implement a specification of a classical machine learning algorithm, which is suitable for purely in-memory reali realization. Uh, what we need to do, uh, and that's what we do uh, currently. Um, so uh, we are working on implementation uh, on uh, implementation of this approach. Uh, in the sparse complex vectors, because the, this proof of concept was done in, in bipolar case, um, and uh, we, we we tested in uh, real uh, on on real data, and on the neural um, side, so uh, we uh, uh, what, uh, we need to work on these items. So basically, uh, binding and binding to uh, of two neural groups how to add a vector and and uh, how to um, extend uh, the functionality of associated memory uh, enabling adding and deleting operations so at least this is on the uh, what we have on the wish list so um this was my last slide so thank you very much for your attention so